in order to make our country successful and safe and glorious, I will very, very, very probably do it again, okay? Very, very, very probably. Very, 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 very probably. Get ready. That's all I'm telling you. Very soon. Get ready. Do what again, Allison? What's I don't he, know. What's he referencing what's he there? Um, okay, for more on that, let's welcome back in the rest of our team. Joining us in studio this morning, political analyst and best-selling author Mark Halperin and the former lieutenant governor of New York, Newsmax contributor Betsy McCoy. Betsy, is he running again? It looks as if he probably will run. That's as close as he can come legally at this point. And I will say that these midterm elections are largely also a referendum on Donald Trump, and many of his candidates are surging in the polls. Wait, do you even... mean all these election deniers? Yeah. <laughs> no, not the election deniers. That is a nonsense term. You, no one is denying right. there was an election in November 2020, That's right. by the That's way. That's right. Yes. And, and if Joe Biden wants to talk about election deniers, let's look at Stacey Abrams, Hillary Clinton. Right. <laughs> right. Good points. Mark, does he announce that he's running? If he does, does he do it in November? Does he wait until... Okay, go ahead. You're shaking your head. I'm going to stop so, the question. With this hand, I'm covering the midterms. With right. this hand, I'm really focused on Joe Biden and Donald Trump. Let's talk about three dates in November, okay? November 12th, Tiffany Trump gets married at Mar-a-Lago. Okay. November 19th, Joe Biden's granddaughter gets married at the White House. November 20th, Joe Biden's birthday. Okay. I believe, I believe based on my reporting, both of these guys are focused on those events. Neither is going to announce before the big weddings. But look, potentially, for double announcements right after the second wedding and the birthday. Does Trump, if he announces, wait until an announcement comes from Biden? I think, I think he may well announce between the two weddings. Okay. Between the two weddings. And Joe Biden is telling people he's running. Donald Trump is telling people he's running. Neither person in private conversations is saying, still thinking about it, maybe. They are both saying, I am running. And I'm telling you, it's very possible that they're both in this race before Thanksgiving. But the big difference is, of course, okay. that many Republicans are rooting for Donald Trump to run. Democrats are cowering no, gotta, at the idea Betsy, gotta, that Joe Biden is going to run. Betsy, I got to say, if you look at the polling, it's you're right. Fewer Democrats and Americans are enthusiastic about Biden. That's but if true. you look at the public opinion, the public does not want a rematch. More than 50 percent of the country does not want this rematch. So this is an unprecedented story. Two guys who have both been president, both on the precipice of announcing they're running for president. They'll be the huge front runners, and the public doesn't want it. And the narrative that they can say, well, listen, Joe Biden beat him before. Maybe he could beat him again. And within he did the, it in 2020. Within the Democratic Party, it's fascinating. I talk to Democrats who say the only person we have who can beat Donald Trump is Joe Biden. And I talk to equally smart Democrats who say the only person we might run who could lose to Donald Trump is Joe Biden. Interesting. Interesting. By the way, he's going to be 80 years old on November 20th. I don't expect that birthday to get a lot of attention. Well, some people think they purposely the planned House. the granddaughter's wedding to distract from the birthday. It's, it's, not the day chronological, it's not the chronological age of it Biden. It has nothing to do with age. It it's has to do with he doesn't have his marbles right. anymore. Thank you. As my grandparents used to say, it is not an age thing. That's Absolutely right. not an age. My dad is 80 years old. He's probably watching right now. Good morning, Dad. Um, he's still got his marbles. Yes. You're, you're um, not, don't let ageism get into this. You're not going to like this reporting, but I've talked to a number right. of people who spent a lot of time with President Biden lately. And they say he's absolutely there in the conversations. And these aren't spinners. Oh, sorry, these, are not, these are not spinners. No. These are Susan not spinners. Yeah. One, Jill Biden, one, person, Hunter Biden. one person I'm referring to spent a long time one-on-one -on -one with Joe Biden. And he doesn't want Joe Biden to run. And he went in assuming he'd come out saying, of course he can't run. And he came out saying, actually. Sorry, anonymous doesn't count. Now, yeah, Mark, is this the bar <laughs> of expectations? I'm but sorry, this the bar if you of want to go on the record saying Joe Biden has marbles. I can't tell you who it is, but this is not a Biden. Ser Biden serious fan. question, serious question. Is, is this the bar of expectation? Um, I, I, and I was expecting it during the Fetterman debate. People said, geez, as long as he goes in there and doesn't fall over, right. that's a win for John no. Fetterman. In 2020, when he was debating Donald Trump, who was the president at the time, the expectation, the bar of expectation for Joe Biden was so low. Was your friend, no, your contact? It's not, it's, Did this person going there expect Expecting Joe Biden to be, you know, soup on his chin and, and you know, watching Happy Days reruns or something like that? He was because the expectation was is so low. He was expecting Grandpa Simpson and he got Ron DeSantis. Right. No, right. that's not what happened. <laughs> what I believe is happening is he has good days and bad days. 
And okay. I think this well, was a good day. Do we want that person? The, okay, the nation point. can't afford bad days. People want yeah. the so, nation right. can't afford a Look president in North charge Korea of bad days. Right now, That's we right. just had Fred Flights talking about North Korea has fired more missiles in a calendar year than they ever have before. The Washington Post, George Will, with an article out yesterday, yes. and this is telling, especially if it's coming from the Washington Post before the midterms. If the Democrats get shellacked, you're going to see a lot more of this. But Will basically saying, for the good of the country, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris should bow out. Of the 2024 election. Mark, your reaction? There's just a ton of Democrats who agree with George Will, but I'm telling you, if you're an incumbent president and you announce you're running, I don't think you're going to be stopped for the nomination. It wasn't a news match. I have to disagree though, because <laughs> Post, so you know? many Democrats see the cynicism of running a candidate who is incapable of serving. Mm. Mm. Okay. You guys want to talk about Twitter? Mark, your favorite topic? Bloomberg with some reporting this morning that uh, Elon Musk, who now owns Twitter, could lay off up to 3,700 employees. Twitter's headquarters in San Francisco closed today. The layoffs will begin right around 9.30 a.m. Eastern time in California. It's against the law to not give people 60 days notice. Elon Musk can obviously afford to pay people the 60 days pay that they would, they would get if they were given that notice. Uh, what do you make? Betsy, to you first, are the changes Well, happening? first of all, I'm glad he's doing it, and I hope he will start by cleaning house of all the executives who colluded with the White House and other branches of the federal government to censor the American public. Yeah, the employees got this, this email. It says, in an effort to place Twitter on a healthy path, we'll go through the difficult process of reducing our global workforce on Friday. So that's today. We recognize this will be an impact on num a number of individuals. So all these employees got this. They're going to wonder when they wake up today if they have a job. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Musk is, is right. like Kanye West, just less stable. Uh, look, it, it, it is an important institution technologically in, in our world, and this guy has got a record of business success, but this is not, in my HR manual, this is not how you handle your employees. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying the morale there is all time low, but it's pretty bad. Do we, you know, every day now, especially if you watch the, the local news, there's always like a, a funny, like kind of pithy Elon Musk story. And I, I almost think Elon Musk needs to kind of go away for a little while, manage Twitter. You know, it's going to take some time. It's going to be choppy there for a while as he sort of reconfigures things. But I don't know if I need to hear from Elon Musk every single day walking agree. in with the kitchen sink. I agree, yeah. but uh, I'd like to differ with Mark, as we often do, <laughs> on how to treat Twitter employees. These are not people making widgets. These are the people who have been censoring the American public, depriving people of the truth during two or three election cycles. I'm glad they're going to be fired. Hmm. Well, but I, I, look, I, I don't disagree with you about the insidious role that Silicon Valley has played in our politics in the last few years. I completely agree with you about that. All I'm saying is if this guy really wants to turn this thing around and make it a force for good in the country and profitable, terrorizing the entire workforce may not be the best he's way to do it. He's not terrorizing well, them. Sending, he's gonna, sending everybody that a letter saying, saying that's that's right. Right. Fired. Mark, that's that, right. we, we got to leave it there, but that same workforce terrorized the American people. You might it, might have shifted did. a presidential election. Betsy, you work for the New York Post as well. Yeah, right. um, remember the Hunter Biden laptop story. Censored. My parents, for example, didn't know it existed before the 2020 election. A lot of people said after they found out about it, after the 2020 election, that they might have changed their vote as a result of that. So Twitter has done enough harm. To the to the public square, I and agree, I think Elon I Musk is I'm rooting for Elon Musk. Yeah. All right, we'll pick this back up top of the hour. Betsy McCoy, Mark Halperin, thank you. No crooked, crooked establishment. establishment. None of that twisting the truth. No talking down don't to me. Don't tell me how to think. Don't tell me how to think. Don't tell me how to think. I trust Newsmax. Newsmax. They don't tell, tell me how to think. think. They let, let me decide. Newsmax. Real news for real people.